Hello, I'm Jeff Myers, and welcome to Elgin Today. On this edition, in our first of two trips to the Elgin Police Facility, Chief Jeff Sabota will tell us about the upcoming annual Police Officer Memorial Service, and then Mayor David Captain drops by, and the Chief and the Mayor look at a calendar put out by the Police Department. Elgin Firefighter Jason Walzak has the information about the Firefighter Memorial Service, scheduled for May 9th. Back to the Elgin Police Department, where Sherry Ashenbrenner, the Police Department's Community Outreach Specialist and Elderly Service Officer, has details about some illegal scams going around Elgin. Amanda Moody of the Special Events Office for the City of Elgin has details about the 38th Annual Foxtrot, which is taking place this month, and also about movies and concerts in Elgin's parks this summer. And the Elgin Area Historical Society Museum at Old Main is the site for Mayor David Captain's segment as he introduces the city's new historic preservation planner. Jerry Turnquist, the president of the Elgin Patriotic Memorial Association, will set the stage for Elgin's Memorial Day events. And Mike Lehman, director of golf operations for the city of Elgin and head professional at Bowes Creek Country Club, is excited about the upcoming 2015 golf season. We'll have these stories and more on this edition of Elgin Today. Let's open this show with the first of two trips to the Elgin Police Facility. Hi, Jeff Swoboda from the Elgin Police Department. I'm actually here today to invite all of you to the Police Memorial, which we have every year on the steps of the law enforcement facility right here at 151 Douglas. So I'd like to invite the entire community to come out May 12th at 2.30 here in the afternoon. And uh, with all the things going on around the country with law enforcement, I think it would be very nice to have a large contingent of the community show up to show your support for the Elgin Police Department, who is all about the community and working with the community to solve the problem. So please stop by May 12th at 2.30 right here in front of the Elgin Police Department. And while at the police facility, Mayor David Captain dropped by and Chief Soboda would tell the mayor about a calendar for a good cause. The calendar that the mayor is looking at is uh, was put together by our social services department. Joanne Stingley and her group uh, put together a calendar to sell to the community in an effort to raise some funds to help with the uh, homeless and getting some uh, treatment and some uh, counseling services for some of our homeless population. So it's a nice grassroots effort of uh, the Elgin Police Department and the interns and our chaplains and really much, uh, pretty much a snapshot about the entire Tire thing, pretty uh, pretty good pictures there, huh, Mayor? Really nice, very nice, and a great idea, you know. And that's part of what, uh, you know, people say that government shouldn't be involved in some of these things, but that's not the case. Sometimes we have to step in and and provide assistance for people that are falling through the through the uh, cracks in society. And this is a great way to do it and get volunteer uh, uh, funds to uh, help uh, transport people and uh, help them out when they're uh, down and out. I like April because I'm uh, very concerned about the rope program and I'd like to see that expand and it shows our rope officers. You can contact the Social Services Department if you go on our website or Facebook and uh, Joanne Stingley's contact information is there and she'll get you a calendar. Hurry up, the year's, the year's moving, moving by fast. Good looking calendar. A lot of good look at people in here. Also a part of Elgin's Preservation Month, the Elgin Fire Department has their annual Firefighters Memorial taking place at Fire Bar No. 5 Museum at 10 a.m. on May 9th as we hear more from a seven-year veteran firefighter. That's correct. On May 9th, we've, we've been doing it for quite some time now, we'll do a, a memorial service and it's for all Mabus District uh, Division 2 Team members have been lost across the last year. It's for active members who may have lost their lives in the line of duty and also for retired men, uh, men and women who, who've succumbed to their illnesses. It happens at Fire Barn Museum number five, does it not? That's correct. Fire Barn number five, which is over on St. Charles. And you, you bring out uh, units from other cities come out, do you? Yeah, that's correct. It's for the, the entire Mabus Division. And so all the surrounding communities, uh, the way a Mabus Division is set up, mut mutual aid box alarm system. So if, if we have an incident that's too large for us, we can call their help in. If they have an incident where they need more help, we send some of our rigs and personnel to help them out. Uh, the fire service is all about cooperation. That's how we get things done. And so we, we invite them in also for the memorial services. It's a great showing. You traditionally have a speaker, do you? Uh, we, we've usually got a, a few speakers. Um, in years past, it's, it's been uh, members who've lost a, a part of their family. Uh, sometimes it's an honored guest, a chief or a higher ranking officer, stuff like that. And of course, you put chairs right on the lawn, right on the Vandenbort uh, area lawn there, and you're inviting the folks to come up. 
Th that, that's correct. We'd, we'd love to have the public come out for this. It's, it, these, these departments are here to serve you. Uh, we're here for you guys, and, and we'd love to see you out there, see some of, some of our history and traditions uh, put on display for you. It's a great way to see the museum, isn't it? It, it is indeed, and, and the museum is open. Uh, you, you can see some of, some of the older stuff dating back to the days when uh, we responded uh, with, with horse-drawn apparatus. And you had hay from the 20s up there for years, didn't you? There, there's still some grain stuck in the walls, actually. That's, uh, a lot of the new guys like to go over there and get a handful of grain by knocking on the walls. So you can still get some <laughs> That's great, Jason. Jason, also recently, of course, with, with the tornado that took place on April 9, the Elgin Fire Department was involved. Uh, that's correct. We, we again, ba going back to this Mavis response, um, obviously it'll, uh, an incident like that is going to greatly exceed what the local uh, establishment can handle. So they put out a call for help and then uh, Mavis Division 2 sent, sent uh, a convoy up there, um, in, including uh, some TRT individuals which did uh, specialized rescue and, and then just some fire response to go door to door and check on people. Some of the homes were completely decimated. Others just had minor damage, but we want to check on the people that are in there. Make sure their whole family's accounted for, make sure they don't have any immediate needs, and then move on to the next house. We're here at the Elgin Police Facility, going to talk it over with Sherry Ashenbender. Sherry, your official title is? I am the Community Outreach Specialist and Elderly Service Officer. Great title, and you do a great job with that. Now, we're looking at, you're talking not only the seniors, but with everyone when there's concerns, scams in the area. Yeah, right now we have seen a kind of a rise in a ruse entry, and that means that someone comes to your door pretending to be someone else from another organization trying to get into your house, which the whole purpose of that is to try to distract you, get you to the kitchen, get you to your basement, maybe even outside, uh, while their other person, their other accomplice, then will come into your house and go into your bedroom, and then they're looking for the money and they're looking for jewelry. So they don't necessarily flash a card or anything, uh, you just don't want to let them in. Right. They'll, they'll use ruses like they work for the City of Elgin Water Department, or I'm a neighbor um, and I need to put up a fence, so I need to see where your property line is. Anything to get you distracted. A lot of this going around. You've got another uh, problem that's been going around. Well, we've had a couple um, calls, well, I should say a couple, a lot of calls on people who get calls from the IRS. Mm. They're claiming to be from the IRS, uh, IRS, they're saying they're agents, they're telling you that you owe back taxes, that you're going to be arrested. Very scary, you know, very scary, especially this time of year. Oh, yeah. My brother had one of those recently. It is frightening. Yeah, we had When the government calls. calls, you're shaking. Yeah, yep. That is a scam mm -hmm. because the IRS would never call you on the phone and they will never email you. Um, so they'll only snail mail you. So if that's if you get one of those calls, that's a scam. And then one more is the Microsoft scam. A lot of seniors have told me they've gotten calls saying that there's a virus on your computer and we're going to help you get it off. So just give us your password and let us in. You're always reachable if folks have questions. Oh, always, always. 847-289-2626. All right. Well, those are great information sources and it is frightening. And that IRS scam, even after April 15th, they're still calling you because they're looking for back. You're around because they'll tell you you owe back taxes now. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful. They're not going to call you. You're great with the seniors, and you've got a couple events coming up. Is that right? You know what, Jeff? It's just in time for the Roos entries. We have got one that's called Who's Really Knocking at Your Door? And it's going to be at the center of Elgin at the Heritage Ballroom on May 7th. We did this five years ago. Mm -hmm. We had 300 seniors. It was standing room only. And we've got a lot of organizations coming, anywhere from NICOR to Comcast to ComEd, FedEx, Huawei, UPS. It's what they do is they do a fashion show of their, their uniforms, wow. and then they'll come back to the stage, and then they're going to get, uh, I guess, berated by Chief Jeff Sabota. Wow. On, you know, He's what, got a good eye. <laughs> <laughs> he, they're going to, what are you wearing? What's your ID? Um, where, what do you drive? Right. Uh, right. Why would you need to come into the senior's home? So wow. it's going to be fun, and That's you great. can sign up. You just got to call Elgin Township at 847-741-2045. All right. Anything else? One more. Also, the picnic. Oh, boy. Jeff, the picnic. Our annual triad picnic is going to be out at Willow Lake Estates again, and that is going to be um, on July 23rd, and our theme is Elvis is back in the building because it's his 80th birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, well, that's fun, and that uh, fills up quickly, so make yeah. sure folks uh, sign up for you that. Bet, yeah, and you can't call till May 8th. All right, Sherry Ashenbender with all the information as we talk with you from the Elgin Police Facility. The time for the running of the Elgin Valley Foxtrot is almost upon us as we check in with City Hall for information on some upcoming events. It is. Yes, the date is May 23rd, and it is coming up very quickly. Um, so we are hustling and bustling and getting everything together. 38th annual one it is, and of course, uh, if I want to sign up at this time, how much will it cost me? It is $45 for the 10 mile, 35 for the 5K, and then it's $12 per individual that wants to do the walk, or $40 per group of four. And the walk for a cause is a great way for the folks to get involved, isn't it? Correct, yes. It actually supports 25 of our local nonprofits. 
You've got a nice website. You can go up to the city website to get all the pertinent information, can't we? Yes, it's uh, cityofelgin.org backslash foxtrot. In the 10-mile run in the 5K, we have cash prizes. Correct. We have first, second, and third place for both male and female for the 10-mile and the 5K. It's become such a great special event. In recent years, you've added music. There's a great post-race party, mm -hmm. isn't there? Every uh, participant in either of the races, the 10 mile and 5K gets a ticket for a free beer sponsored through Kiwanis. And uh, our band this year is the New Invaders. So we're really bringing a rock and roll theme to the Foxtrot this year. And if the weather's good, we get to present the trophies outside, do we not? Correct, the weather will be good. As soon as they run, they're handed their numbers, aren't they? Correct, everything will actually be available through an app this year. We have a new timing company, so um, there's no more printing out tickets. Um, you just look it up on your smartphone and it's right then and there at the race. Uh, and again, this means so much to the city of Elgin, does it not? Yes, it does. Um, this being our 38th year, we're really expecting a great turnout. The race is established, people are excited for it, and we're excited to host it. We're approaching a wonderful summer of concerts and movies, aren't we, in the park and at Festival Park? We are. We have a great lineup this year. Our first summer concert series begins at Wing Park on June 16th. We are kicking it off with the Hat Guys, and each week we have a different band from a different genre of music, so we're expecting quite a good crowd. Um, our first movie in the park at Festival Park will begin on July 16th. That'll be a Thursday night, and we're kicking that off with a classic, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And these events are all free and great for the whole family, aren't they? They are free, open to the public. We do have our nonprofits that come in and they do, um, they sell concessions for us, and it's a great time. Month of May, we had a chance to talk it over with Mayor David Captain. We are in a very historic spot. Mayor. Yes, we are, Jeff. We're at the uh, Elgin Historical Society in Old Main that used to be the uh, property of Elgin Academy. And this was the first restoration project in Elgin uh, that was started uh, back, well, when I was a boy, back in the 70s. And uh, the uh, uh, project was really uh, uh, purchased by the community and a restoration project of an old building that has served a purpose for us for many decades and now houses the Historical Society. We're in the room uh, that uh, really talks about the uh, Elgin National Watch Factory. And with us today is Kristen Sunquist. She's our new uh, preservation specialist uh, for the city of Elgin. And we're going to talk about Preservation Month. Things are uniquely Elgin, and uh, I, we may be the only community in the area that has a whole month dedicated to preservation of uh, Elgin's history in our old buildings. Yeah, we went from a week to a month in the Saroche Sahar days, so that was great. Yeah, we sure did, and uh, Saroche Sahar uh, uh, really started the, uh, helped start the movement here, and uh, uh, now uh, Kristen is, uh, you know, filling in uh, uh, adequately. She just started uh, a couple months ago. Three weeks, Three actually. Weeks. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. No, it's been great so far. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, but yeah, this is a great month to celebrate preservation and um, our, our rich heritage. So uh, to kickstart it, we have um, the Mayor's Awards on May 5th, and um, that's essentially a uh, way to honor those who are um, dedicated to our historic neighborhoods, our um, history, and you know, it's a, just a great way to, for um, us to just celebrate this this um, city's rich heritage. No question, and of course we're all invited to go to that award. Sure, it's open to the public. It's on the, uh, it'll be at the art showcase on the uh, top floor of the professional building and another historic building in, uh, in downtown Elgin. Uh, typically we have, uh, oh, 15 or so awards that are given out for uh, uh, commercial businesses and for homes that have been restored and uh, re uh, returned back to their old glory. And uh, it's amazing to see how much work people put in and listen to the personal stories that they tell about the trials and tribulations that they've had. No question from houses to porches to whatever they might Or oh, whatever back. they do, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's on May 5th, that right. is officially. And the, week, the month is uh, full of events, and uh, Kristen can give us an update of some of the highlights. There's uh, really too many to talk about today, but there really are a number of great events to, uh, uh, for people to enjoy. And you're so new, what caught your eye with these great events? You know, there was um, the Elgin um, bungalow uh, uh, lecture that we're going to have. Um, it's going to be talking about 2,000 bungalows or more that we have here in Elgin. And, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, tours and, um, you know, special events here that are just going to be a, a great time for all. And, you know, I'm just really excited for, for um, 
everything that's going to be happening here um, during this month. No, no question. It's a great month. Earlier in the show, we talked about some of the events like the police memorial and the fire memorial. So, so many things going on there. Oh, absolutely. And the, uh, you know, the, the fire memorial, for example, is done at the uh, fire museum. So you get a chance, you can uh, attend the memorial service and uh, also go through the fire museum and see some of the equipment and the uh, old equipment that's there. So, you know, it's a, a kind of a double duty kind sure. of thing. You know, really a, a recent restoration project will be the Lord's Park Zoo that day as well. And we brought the bison back and uh, uh, doing some restoration work out there. And uh, I think that's uh, really a, a, a treasure for our city as well. And one month later, the, uh, the zoos will open up again this year. Absolutely, yep. And it uh, gives people an opportunity to walk through Lord's Park and, uh, and uh, see the animals, see the zoos, uh, take a look at the pavilion, which was another restoration project right. uh, for the city of Elgin. That was a good uh, uh, number of years ago that it was the uh, discussion made about whether we should spend the money on these kind of things. And these types of buildings and these restorations have paid us dividends over time and uh, um, uh, takes a lot of upkeep and a lot of volunteer work but really it's what really drives the uh, preservation month and the uh, Gifford Park Association's house walk are the volunteers that make it successful. No question about that. What other items did you have for us my dear? Uh, there's also project 231 which will be sh um, uh, doc it's a documentary about Elgin's African American heritage, and that'll be showing at the Gale um, Borden Library, um, I believe. Um, May 19th. 19th. That's right. Yeah. And so we've seen a preview of that in uh, late April. That's very exciting. I've been working with uh, Ernie for a couple of years now to try to get this yeah. done, and it's been a, a long process for him, and uh, they've done a lot of interviews. I understand it's going to be a terrific movie, and looking forward to seeing it. It's like Ben Hur. Years in the making, but it'll be a great movie. There we go. And I got a, I think, I, I think he gave me about Five second interview as part <laughs> wow. of that, so we'll see. That's great. And, you know, Ryan Stone Productions involved with that. Jeff, one of the things I'd like to talk about, and uh, I've made uh, uh, talk to the city manager, and I'd like to start an initiative in Elgin to look at when I 90 is completed to have exits and exit corridors in the city at uh, Randall Road, Route 31, and Route 25. And I would like to see Route 25 become the entrance to our historic districts. And Gifford Park, Nina, uh, the Watch Factory uh, historic districts, uh, this, this museum, Old Main, as well can be uh, uh, visited and I'd like to put together some brochures or have volunteers work on a committee to talk about these kind of things and bring people to the Elgin community to uh, look at uh, uh, what we have to offer. And we can go back and look at the number of house walks that we've had and maybe p provide uh, addresses for people to come and take a look at some of these homes and really showcase Elgin's history in our historic districts. I think it's really important to the community and it should be something to draw people to the city of Elgin. No question. And when you first came to town, you, you came from what college? University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And where did you grow up at? Uh, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. When, when you would see Douglas Avenue and drive down that for the first time, you must go, wow, look at these houses. No, it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I was very excited. Um, uh, main reason um, why we moved here was because of the um, rich heritage and um, great historic architecture. So. Yeah. Good job. Mm -hmm. Spoken like a preservation boat. And Jeff, I think whoop, I think she's typical of people that uh, come to the city of Elgin and want to uh, um, become part of our community. They look at the housing stock. We have a wide variety of housing stock. One of the things we've been talking about uh, uh, doing is the uh, a bungalow historic district. Mm -hmm. Not that it's something that we do geographically, but it would be for that type of architecture. And I think that that's... Uh, uh, something that really uh, uh, can be a positive for our community as well. And I think that that's uh, uh, really the, uh, you know, uh, I, the, we're, we're making such great strides in our community. And uh, the, uh, uh, the downtown is now be added to the list of historic places. We're working with uh, a group to uh, uh, work on the tower building to try to preserve some of these buildings. And I think it's uh, uh, our history. I like to work on things that have been successful and continue to work on those things. And certainly historic preservation has been that for our city. And we were in this room, as you mentioned, you were taking a peek at some of the watch factory photos that are so beautiful, aren't they? Absolutely. And it, take, it gives people a chance to walk through the museum here and see the uh, uh, what the working class people did in Elgin back in uh, uh, the time of the watch factory, back in the early 1900s, and uh, uh, learn a lot about a community and learn a lot about what virtually any community in the, in the state. 
Well, congratulations for getting that new job. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Well, that's great. Well, we, uh, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> See? Yeah, all right. We should do a couple more minutes, shouldn't we? Sure. All right. Well, Mayor, we've got to scoot out of here. Nice job. Congratulations on the recent happenings in your life. Thank you very much, Jeff. I look forward to another four years and doing this uh, program uh, every month and talk about things that make Elgin a special place to live. Well said. It's always our delight to be with you. And thanks again, my dear. That's going to be it from our historic side here with our segment with Mayor David Captain. These are some video looks from last September in the beautiful golf course at Bowes Creek Country Club. 2015 season is upon us, and Mike Lehman, Director of Golf Operations for the City of Elgin and the Bowes Creek Head Professional, has some wonderful ideas for this year. Yeah, we're excited for the new season here in 2015. We've got a number of great programs uh, that are going to be starting this season, and we're excited to bring them forward. You can take care of the adults, uh, the kids, everybody, can't you? Absolutely. We've got a number of programs uh, designed specifically for seniors, uh, adults, and beginners. Uh, so we are uh, actually expanding the program this season to include a U.S. Kids program as well as a PGA Junior League, which is going to be exciting to play against other clubs uh, with our kids. If folks want to get more information on that, do they phone you or go to your website? They can, uh, they can do either. They can go to bowscreekcc.com or uh, go ahead and give us a call here in the Pro Shop at 847-214-5880. All right, and a lot of those uh, lessons are starting in mid-May, aren't they? We've got a couple starting in mid-May, generally in June. We've got a real real neat tiny tots program that's starting this year in June, and we certainly wanted to wait until it's a little bit warmer. So, uh, But our PGA Junior League, uh, we have a preseason starting uh, the first week in May. You received a nice award from uh, the golf industry, didn't you? Uh, we've uh, received a number of awards here as a team, uh, the Bowes Creek team. We've uh, uh, been offered uh, recognition by the USGA uh, as a certified golf course, which is exciting. And certainly we uh, have uh, been offered uh, awards from the Golf Course Superintendents Association as well as the Golf Course Architects Association. All of Elgin's proud when that happens. Yeah, I think all of our products here in Elgin are superior, and we've got Bowes Creek, the Highlands, Wing Park, um, can't forget about Wing Park, the oldest nine-hole municipal golf course in Illinois. Is it true that city manager Sean Siegel is the number one golfer in town? Uh, he's pretty superior. I mean, very few people can measure up to his uh, skill set. That is certainly high praise. Mike Lehman also told Elgin today about a great players club opportunity at both Bowes and Highlands golf courses on Monday through Thursday to help golfers get into the swing of things for 2015. We'll see you on the course. Next, let's go to 225 Grand Boulevard in Lords Park, the Elgin Public Museum, to learn about their upcoming May and June events and their expanded summer schedule. We open in June, but we've still got plenty of things coming in May. There's a wildflower walk on the 16th of May, and we're looking forward to that. That'll Everything will be fresh and ready in the in the uh, wildlife area. You have a wonderful science night in May. We do. We have a science night in May and that'll be our last one for the year until fall and it's grossology and everything about it will be gross and stinky and yucky. If I want to get involved with events, how do I, do I register? Yes, you register here at the museum. It's 847-741-6655. Some of the events don't require registration, and some do. The ones that don't are the, the science night is drop-in, and it's just, just a little fun thing to come to. Uh, when you said we're open in June, you, your hours extend. You're open in the winter, but your hours extend in June. Yes, in June, we, 1st of June, we're open uh, Tuesday through Sunday, noon until 4. And groups could call you to, to come? Yes, to come, and, to come and visit for a program. They can call and make an appointment. Remind us, this, this building has is, is got such great history. Remind us how old the building is. The building was originally started in 1904, and the last wing was finished in 2000. So it is complete? No, it's got one more wing to go. So one more wing. So when it was originally, it was just like 75% done, and we added the, what we're standing in right now came about in 2000. That's right. Our, our director at the time was in a wheelchair, and she needed an elevator and somewhere to work, so the city put this wing on. Of course, Lord's Park, right out in your front yard, and then, then, then the bison and everything right yes. there. We have a great opening uh, event for this uh, May, don't we? Yes, on May 9th, Lord, Friends of Lord's Park Zoo is having a function in the park, and everyone is invited, and they hope everyone comes. And th when the zoo will open in the, the 14th of June, 
then they would like to have volunteers there every day, and you call Terry Gable to uh, tell him when you could help. With new bison and new elk last year and the farm zoo coming back, you had throngs of folks here. We certainly did. People who would, had never been here before, people who had been calling for five years wanting to know, is it open this year? And finally, last year it was open and we had a lot more people. Next, we go to Veterans Memorial Park to learn about the four major events slated for this year's Memorial Day. Well, Monday, May 25th, uh, Memorial Day in Elgin, I think it's our a program that's gone on since 1868 in Elgin. Uh, the Elgin Patriotic Memorial Association that I'm president of along with the city of Elgin uh, is coordinating and overseeing uh, four different Memorial Day events that day. They start uh, at Mount Hope Cemetery at 845, uh, Lakewood Memorial Park at uh, 915, here at the Veterans Memorial Park that we're at at 945 and at uh, Bluff City Cemetery uh, at 11 o'clock. The Veterans Memorial Park pro program at uh, uh, 945 this year we have uh, Adrian Townsend, uh, chaplain from the Great Lakes Naval Training Station, who will give uh, the keynote address here. The program also includes the, uh, the Elgin uh, Master Corral. Uh, at Bluff City Cemetery at 11 o'clock our program uh, focuses on the 50th anniversary of boots on the ground in Vietnam. Our speaker will be uh, Lorraine Dar, who served as a uh, first lieutenant in, uh, at uh, Cameron Bay at the United States Air Force Hospital there. And we'll talk about, uh, put the focus on nurses and nurses and how uh, they assisted during the Vietnam War. And uh, that program will also include the Larkin High School Band and the Elgin Master Corral. Uh, the Bluff City Cemetery program, the granddaddy of all, also includes uh, uh, floral tributes by the different uh, groups uh, that are part of the Elgin Patriotic Memorial Association. I think we have 19 groups that make up our organization that, that plan Memorial Day programs in Elgin. It's always a memorable day in town. It certainly is, and, and we really want to, on Memorial Day, really focus on the fact that this, is the, this commemorates the true meaning of Memorial Day. Our events are all family events, and, and we hope people bring out their children and uh, let them experience and learn what Memorial Day is really all about. And also, bringing your children, maybe bring a lawn chair too, especially to uh, the Veterans Memorial Park and, and, and Bluff City Cemetery. We never have enough seating. And you've got a wonderful website, do you know? Thank you, yes. At uh, uh, elginmemorialday.org, you can find uh, all the maps on how to get to the organizations, the times, pictures of some of the past years, the history of our organization. A lot of people never heard of the Elgin Patriotic Memorial Association. We took over Memorial Day planning from the, the Grand Army of the Republic back in 1892. We're, we're looking forward to our 125th uh, anniversary of our organization in just a couple of years, too. And what exactly was the focus of attention for these eyes in the lower level of the Hemmings Cultural Center on Saturday, April 25th? Here we are again at the Elgin Pet Health and Safety event. We do two of these per year. This is our April event. It's been extremely successful yet again. We were a little worried about the attendance with the rain, but we had more than 130 animals come out, which just shows just how much the Elgin residents have come to rely on these services. Uh, that at the rabies vaccines and other shots and booster shots we provide here are given by two local Elgin veterinarians. They've been working with us for several years now. And a big thanks again goes out to the Elgin Explorers and James Rogg. They do a tremendous job for us, keeping all the dogs in line and making the event run smoothly. We are planning to do another event uh, similar to this in November. We'll also have another component uh, that's a pet expo, so you can come meet some pet-related vendors, learn about different things that are happening in Elgin related to pets and the pet world. Our last story this time, one of the most historic and emotional days in Elgin history. This crowd, first in the lobby way of the Blizzard Theater on the campus of ECC, to view a movie, an 83-minute documentary of Elgin's African-American heritage called Project 231. It's a longtime project for Elgin's Ernie Brodnax, and he had these words before the movie. This is the biggest day of my life. It's unbelievable. The people that are here that I haven't seen, I got relatives here from out of state. Uh, it's just amazing. I uh, woke up this morning and I was just, couldn't sleep last night. And I said, I'm going to a thing that a lot of people have spent a lot of time and money. For me, it's unbelievable. Elgin's unbelievable. This crowd's unbelievable. The day's unbelievable. And it is not ended yet. If you missed the premiere of this well-received documentary, you can pre-order Project 231 for $15 by calling 847-742-4248, the Elgin Area Historical Society. The movie also will be shown May 19th at the Gale Borden Library at 7 o'clock. 
You can learn more about the information you saw here in Elgin today or about city services, programs, and events by going to the Elgin website at www.cityofelgin.org. And now the City of Elgin has a 311 contact center. Elgin 311. Call, click, connect by calling 311, the city's information and request resource. For everyone here at Elgin Today, I'm Jeff Myers. We'll see you next time.